Let's talk about keywords. SEO, keywords, you've heard it a million times. Today we're going to talk about how to make it easy to dominate under a keyword with my special formula called a keyword footprint. Stay tuned. So every keyword on the internet is like its own little universe. It's got a sun, it's got stars, and we have to think about what is all the angles of that universe? Top, bottom, side, side. Google understands all of those relationships, the front, the bottom, the sides. But as humans, we sometimes, it's weird. Like the same thing can have multiple meanings. One of my clients, they sell bamboo products. And one of the things that they were so confused about is that they thought all of their customers searched for the word picks because restaurateurs, they use that lingo, picks. Well, let me show you here what happens when you search for picks. And they were convinced this is how people search for their products, toothpicks, but they call them picks. Well, when you put picks into Google, as you can see, it's all NFL picks. Top to bottom, front to back, it's all NFL. Oh, huh. okay, so even if I optimize for that phrase, uh, that wouldn't be really where we would wanna be anyway. Now I jump over to images, check this out. Now, oh look, it's all guitar picks. How could the same word have so many different angles? A uh, party pick, there's all, oh, and a picture, hello, everyone calls a picture a pick. That's a P-I-C, but it still has the same sort of, you know, essence to it, if you will. So this happens a lot, <laughs> where users get this keyword in their head, business owners especially, they think that this moniker, this acronym is going to be the thing that you know, pushes them out the stratosphere and into this whole world of notoriety. Well, what I know for sure is in findability, it's about understanding that one keyword phrase that you want to own and what's all the different sides of that keyword, front to back. So we have something we call a keyword footprint and it'll be downloadable at the end of this video. The footprint is going to walk you through all of the different angles of how people think about that. So remember, Google's been collecting and archiving all this content since the day it was born, and it keeps all of that in its archive. Now, the data you see in these keyword tools are giving you a running 12-month database of keywords. But let's face it, they have all this data. They know all the different ways that people think about a specific topic. So when we go in here, we wanna make sure that we're being a thought leader by keyword phrase. So let's go in and let's pick a topic. So I'm going to pick 3D printers because my husband is crazy. He's printing everything in a 3D printer. He printed me a vase for Mother's Day. It was about this big, held on my flowers, gorgeous. He prints me like ring holders and holders for my cell phone and strange things like octopuses and it's very strange, but he's just so happy. I just can't deny him that, he just loves it. So. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go in and I'm gonna type in 3D printer. Now there's a whole world around 3D printing. And what you'll see here is we've got designs, filament, that's the stuff they put in there that gets um, melted when it makes it, price, software, files, reviews, pen, and cost. Hmm, that's pretty interesting. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit that guy. I'm gonna look at the page. I'm gonna scroll down. Oh, look, a bunch of questions. What is the best 3D printer? What is the best 3D printer for home use? Is a 3D printer worth it? Can you make money with a 3D printer? Hmm, that's pretty interesting. So those questions, you'll often see those questions pop up in search results, and you wanna take a screen grab of that because those are the questions you're gonna to wanna to answer if you're gonna be a thought leader in 3D printers. Now I'm gonna scroll all the way to the bottom again, and I'm gonna see those same drop downs. So what you'll see here is I see Amazon and YouTube and prices and uh, MakerBot is a kind of 3D printer, best professional 3D printer, and of course we have 3D printer metal. They do, they print metal, it's crazy. So we go 3D printer. I'm, I really like this one as well, the one that's at the very top. This is called suggestive search. Google knows all the things that people add on to the root of 3D printer. So if I know what people are adding on top of that, that means I can craft my content around what they already want. Yay! 
right? We don't have to guess in marketing anymore. It's right here. I mean, if this doesn't make you excited, then I don't know. I just get so happy about stuff like this because I am sick and tired of guessing about what is going to convert, what's going to connect, what's going to resonate. Have you guys heard that? It's like, ah, no, it's not your mission statement and it's not the tagline under your logo. It's not going to resonate. It's not the acronym that you make up that represents a product you have. No one cares. It's about what's in it for them, right? What are they searching? So I'm coming into 3D printers and I see designs and price and filament. If I'm going to be an expert in that space, I better talk about those things. So I'm going to take a screen grab of that. Now let me show you my footprint. So now you're seeing my keyword footprint. So when we're looking at all the different angles of keyword, it's important that we have a graph so we can map it out. So what you're seeing here is I'm going to pop in here 3D printers. So I'm going to start with what the phrase is. Okay. Then I'm going to go down and I'm going to grab those searches related to. Remember, those are the ones at the bottom and the ones that come up under the drop down. So I'm going to insert that guy. I'm just grabbing the picture off my desktop. Okay, so there's all of those ones I talked about filament and all those good stuff. Then I'm going to insert the questions. You know, if you're going to be a thought leader, you've got to answer those active questions. Remember, bring them into church and then convert them. So we've got to know what is the lexicon of my expertise. Then once I know what the lexicon is, then I can talk the way they're thinking, create content the way they're thinking, then all of a sudden they find us and then we tell them about our signature system, our, our three-step process, our acronym series, whatever. But we, we started with them first and then we turned them to our stuff, okay? There's my questions. Now here's the interesting part is now that I know it's 3D printers, I've got all the searches related to, so those are all the things people add on to it after they type in 3D printer. I have all the current questions that people are answer, that are asking of Google. They're super important that you answer those questions. And those questions could be videos, they could be blogs, they could be social posts, but you just gotta answer the question. Now here's the cool thing. You can't just be a one trick pony, right? We're gonna make sure that we are going to have blogs, but then we're gonna share it. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump over to Instagram. Now Instagram has really done an amazing job of really making hashtags something that is very meaningful. Now let's talk about hashtags for a minute because I get a lot of eye rolls when I say hashtag, especially if the group is over 40, 45. <laughs> They're like, oh God, I'm so tired of hearing about the hashtags. My teenage son recently told me to not say hashtag out loud. That's embarrassing. He also said, don't ever do this in my presence. <laughs> so of course, what do I do? This all the time. <laughs> there's gotta be, there's gotta be payback. He wanted room service for two years when he was a kiddo. So, you know, it's gotta be payback, right? So, you know, hashtag this, hashtag mom tired, hashtag mom needs a break. It's fabulous. Try it with your teenager, it's wonderful. Okay, so I'm at Instagram now. I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna do a hashtag 3D printer. Now what you'll see that comes down is all of the different elements there that people are using for the 3D printing world. So you'll see hashtag 3D printer has 731,000 posts for that hashtag. So let's talk a little bit about what the heck a hashtag is. I like to think of a hashtag like a club. So I like rose gold, earl gray, and ringers. <laughs> Those are the three things that I love. So I'm gonna follow the hashtag. It's like, I'm going to go to a party where everyone loves rose gold. And then I'm going to go to a party where everyone loves Earl Grey. Now, I don't have to follow you in order to be interested in that topic. So I just want to go to these cool parties. So you can follow a hashtag, and then you're going to see that show up in your feed in Instagram. Now, here's the cool thing is that hashtags work across all social media. Hashtags work in Facebook. Hashtags work in Pinterest. Hashtag works in Twitter, Instagram, and they even work in YouTube and LinkedIn, I forgot LinkedIn. So if we can tap in to what the trending hashtags are around the topic that we want to be subject matter experts on, you'll see on my screen here that there is some really cool hashtag activity. Uh, 3D Printer World gets almost 9,000 posts. 3D Printer News, 2,200 posts. 3D Printer Filament, 4,600 posts. And I guarantee you my husband is following all of these. <laughs> He's also a drone pilot, so it doesn't get much geekier than that. Love you, honey. Now I have this little universe of how do I share this so I get in front of the right people. A lot of times social media just falls on flat ears because all you're doing is pushing, 
pushing, pushing, pushing. Here's my stuff, here's my stuff, here's my stuff. You should like it, you should follow it, you should comment on it. Why? Does it have anything to do with what I'm interested in or is it just because something you're obsessed with or something you can't stop talking about? But when you change your perspective and you think about a footprint, a keyword footprint, you're thinking from their standpoint, not from yours. All right, so we've got 3D printers down, we've got our searches related to, we have our questions, and now I'm gonna add in our hashtag. All right, now I'm in a really good position. Now this is where it gets a little fancy. In our retreats and our coaching programs, we teach clients and their marketing teams on how to use some pretty geeky stuff. One of our favorite geeky tools is SEM Rush, Search Engine Marketing Rush, SEM Rush. It is about $99 a month. You can sign up for a free seven day trial with a credit card. We're gonna show you a lot of other keyword tools. This is not the only keyword tool. This just happens to be one of our faves. Now let me show you why. So I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna to go to dashboard. Now this is the SEM dashboard. I don't want it to be intimidating to you. We're only gonna look at two things. The first thing is we're gonna to go to something called the keyword magic tool. <laughs> I love how they just add magic to it. I've decided I'm gonna add magic to everything. The keyword magic coaching call. The keyword magic retreat. Just makes everything sound so much better. So I'm gonna start using magic and everything. All right, so we're gonna to go to the keyword magic tool. I'm gonna to type in 3D printer. And let's, let's let this tool that archives and indexes content from Google, Yahoo, the three people that go to Bing every day. I think they have a bell too, because when they have three people, they ring the bell but it's mostly from Google data. Google has the largest search share of any search engine on the planet, so there you go. All right, so let's go down here. So 3D printer you'll see here, let me walk you through what you're looking at. 3D printer, that exact phrase, gets 301,000 searches per month. That's a lot. It gets, and it's also, um, people are paying $1.36 per click to be findable for that. So if you're thinking about what's the value of me ranking organically, just take 300,000 times $1.36. That's the monthly value of that keyword, kind of the street value of that keyword, if you will. So that's probably a good one, but that's gonna be pretty hard to rank for. So let's pick something a little more specific. Typically, the longer the keyword, the shorter the search volume, which you're like, er, that's like record scratch. You're like, mm, I don't want lower, I want bigger. Not in search marketing. Search marketing is about getting a longer keyword phrase and getting maybe a smaller amount of searches, but those searches are amazing. They're targeted, they're fire hot. We want those. When I was at Yahoo, we studied keyword length. And when we had three keywords, one, two, three, four, they were 36% conversion rate. And a 36% conversion rate means they did something when they got to your site. They followed you on social. They subscribed to your blog. They did something. That's really what we want them to do at the end of the day is do something. And also, we're not these huge corporations with huge marketing teams. We've gotta be a little more scrappy and we gotta figure out the keywords that are really we stand a chance to actually rank for. So you wanna pick something that's four keyword phrases in length, ideally, and then we wanna find something that's beefy enough or interesting enough that we could own that keyword. Remember, the keyword is the boss. We wanna make sure that we're picking the right boss here. So you'll see we've got all kinds of things. We've got best 3D printer, metal, cheap. Let's see, 3D printer price, printer designs, models. So if I own a 3D printing company, then I'm going to want to definitely be tapping into all of these different things. These might be YouTube videos, they might be blog posts, they might be hashtags I use. And there are some serious, like cheap 3D printer gets 12,100 searches a month. That is a lot. Now, a lot of people are like, I don't want cheap. That means they don't want to spend any money. Not necessarily. I think everyone wants a good deal, right? Everyone wants a great deal. And we put cheap in, it's because we want a great deal. It's not because we're not going to spend any money. Does that make sense? Like it's, so you want to really pay attention to when they show up in that way. So let's keep looking down here. Let's find something really interesting here. I'm going to go back up and type in filament. Filament is the, the plastic that you put into the 3D printer and then that melts and extrudes to make all these cool stuff. As a 3D printer or maybe a filament maker, I could do 3D printing filament types, 3D printer filament, uh, wood, metal. They actually have wood filament. It's, it smells bizarre when you print it. It smells like you have a fire in the fireplace. <laughs> it's very strange. But they have all kinds of really cool stuff for filament. So I'm gonna go in here I'm gonna go back to 3D printer. 
Now that number has a very big number, 300,000, which is a lot. I'm probably not gonna rank for that, but you know what? I know that I should be talking about that. So 301,000 searches per month. I'm gonna put that down right there under search volume. 301, 00. So another cool part, I should say, is SEMrush has a cheat sheet. So you're like, okay, great, Heather. 300,000 searches, like, how do I even know how much to write on that? Is it 1,000, is it 100,000, how much? This tool has a cheat sheet that we can go in and say, okay, great, I want to rank for 3D printer or 3D printer filament. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna put 3D printer. This tool is called the SEO content template. And the reason that this has like changed my business is because it gives me the actual cheat sheet. We used to count, let's go to the top 10 sites, count the repetitions on each page and then do a word count. And we had to do these in these massive spreadsheets. It was such a pain. When I found this thing, I practically cried because I'm like, oh my gosh, this is now gonna save me so much time. So take a look at this. What this tool does, the, the content template tool, is it goes in and says, okay, here are the top 10 sites that rank for 3D printer. It gives them right there. And then what this tool does is it goes, it visits each one of those sites and calculates a formula, a cheat sheet, by which we're gonna write our page to. So the top 10, there's already an algorithmic equation of why those are there. I don't have time to figure out why they're there. I just know that those guys are doing something right. I wanna do more of what's right. I also like to think about this as cool kids. So think back to high school or elementary school. You know who the cool kids were. They sat in the back of the bus. They knew all I ate the same sandwiches. They all had the same outfits. They hung out together. That's a cool kid. If I could have gotten the recipe to be a cool kid in high school, that would have been a game changer for me. But I want the cool kid formula. And that's what this is. Each keyword phrase has a specific formula. So as I come down here, look at this. So here's all the top 10 that currently rank for 3D printer. Right here is semantically related keywords is the keywords at the bottom and the keywords that drop down at the top of search results. Look at all these. When I go to sit down and write this, I know exactly what to use. I'm gonna talk about rapid prototyping. I'm gonna talk about print quality, objects, the build plate, that's the bottom part, 3D models, 3D objects, all kinds of stuff. It tells me exactly, if I wanna look like a cool kid, then I'm just gonna talk about those topics and I will instantly look like a cool kid and I will rank for that phrase. But you gotta go a little deeper than that. How much do I write? So this is a B fee keyword. And I knew that because it had 300,000 searches. But I have to write 2,585 words exactly to rank for 3D printer. Now there are a million ways that we could make that look pretty and that you can work with your web designer to do that but 2,585 keywords is a lot of content. So where my mind goes is, I'm never gonna rank for that. But I could take a stab at it, and I'm definitely in the right lane. If I did something like 3D printer magic, that would be completely unfindable because I made it up. 3D printer, however, I know and I can look at how are people searching for that? And I can start to nuance my thought leadership around other elements like 3D printing filament, 3D printing plate, uh, cheap 3D printers, things of that nature, so that I can actually compete under the lower line keywords and eventually percolate up to something like 3D printer over time. But it takes time, so choose wisely. Now, I can export this into a Word doc. I can send it to a writer to write this on based on this. I could dictate into my phone and have it transcribed. I use a tool called Rev, rev.com, and I could just dictate it. And I have that cheat sheet in front of me. I'm going to dictate. I'm going to make sure to talk about these things. I'm going to make sure to get that amount of copy. I dictate it in my phone. I upload it to a transcription service, and boom, I've got my blog post for that keyword. And you know that you've created a piece of content that matched the blueprint. So let's go back. So that was 2585. So I'm gonna go back to the PowerPoint. In my keyword, I'm gonna put 2585. Okay, now I've got my completed keyword map. So what you're seeing here is now I have a couple choices. I've got the keyword footprint. I know how much people search, which is 301,000 times per month. I know I have to write 2,585 words. I know all the things that people are talking about that go into deeper that. I know the questions and I know the hashtags. Boom, drop mic, I got it. So if you're gonna be a hashtag, or you're gonna be a keyword expert, then maybe you only have 20 keywords. People in the search marketing industry have made 
it very mystical. There should be a cape involved or a cloak, right? It's very mystical. I'd have to kill you if I told you how we do this. I love to pull back the curtain and show you because it is not as hard as SEO professionals would let on. The problem is, is that we as business owners don't want to take responsibility for this. And hopefully you're starting to see that if you take responsibility, that's when it truly starts to work. And when you give it away, it's always like, hello, anyone home? Hello. Because what happens is I went with my second book, Thumbonomics, I hired a writer. She wrote these great blog posts for all the chapters. I was thrilled. I had a whole year's worth of content. Guess what happened when I post those blogs? Crickets in the background. They knew that I was not there. They knew my heart and my specialty did, was not present. And it just showed up in how people responded to the content. It was like nothing. And as soon as I went in and I wrote something that was all connected and, and, and I was fully present for that content, boy, it like goes crazy. And I'm like, all right, I'm already telling you what you already know is that you got to do the work. There's no sort of outsourcing. There is a point where you can outsource it, but the content, your footprint under those 20 keywords that you're an expert in, you cannot outsource your mind. You cannot do it. You have to squeeze your mind and you got to get all that good stuff out. That's what makes you an entrepreneur. That's what makes you a thought leader. That's what makes you good at what you do is because of what you know. But if you can't get it out and get it onto paper, that's a problem. So. We've got this completed 3D map. I'm gonna have this as a downloadable asset on this video. And I hope you love this. The map is just a game changer. Pick 20 keywords, fill the map out, and then create content based on that cheat sheet. Hey, if you like the content from today's video, we do retreats. So you can come and we can geek out for two days and we get all this keyword research done. We do the journey map and we do this keyword footprint process. It is awesome, super fun. We call them workcations. <laughs> so we pick an amazing location that is conducive to learning. We work our buns off and then we have a good time too. So it's awesome. Check out our website, findability.com. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and thanks for watching.